Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide and today we are checking out a new update for the Kindle Scribe along with a really really interesting price slashes that they actually have on the Kindle Scribe currently on pretty much all of the bundles that you can find. So I thought that it would be a good idea to bring those two together and actually show you what's it about. And also uh, one little bit of extra as well for somebody who may be interested in that. Um, my Kindle did not want to update at all on its own. So I had to perform the manual update and um, yeah, in this video you will see a very short guide on how to do that should you need it. But before we start all of that, I want to say that the MDO24 and MMP, of course, they all work now correctly on the Kindle Scribe. So when MDO was released originally, you can find it on mydeepguide.com slash shop. And you can find more details about it in the this, uh, video description below. You'll find the links for the uh, playlist there. But when MDO2024 was originally released, I also issued a warning for Kindle Scribe users that there was some error with the um, send to Kindle service and it just would not send uh, correctly larger documents, which MDO is. And since then this has been remedied and it now works properly. So yeah, you're welcome to check out the mydeepguide.com slash shop for MDO and MMP. If you're interested in having a kick-ass good organizer um, on your Kindle scribe, or if you're just interested in supporting the independence of my deep guide. And now onwards with the video. All right, first things first, before I even go with the new features, what's new on the Kindle Scribe, I want to go over the procedure of updating because I'm not the only one who sometimes has issues with updates actually not going through for the device. And um, normally the way it should function is that you basically just press sync and it's gonna you know, fetch the update and everything's going to be fine. It's going to ask you to update and that's the way it's supposed to go. Of course, you have to be online in order to do that. Now, what do you do if that does not work? Then you follow the steps that are laid out in the Amazon Kindle update page and link to that you will find in the video description. Step number one that you need to do is you need to download the update file manually. That's going to be a .bin file. So binary file that you need to download and you save it somewhere on your computer because you're going to be uh, transferring that manually onto your Kindle. So then step two is you hook up the Kindle via the USB-C cable to your computer and you leave it in the USB drive mode. As it is in USB drive mode, the downloaded file, the bin file that you've downloaded, you just simply drag and drop it to the root of the Kindle which appeared as a USB drive on your computer. You wait for that to be copied and then step three is you eject safely the Kindle from your computer. You don't yank out the cable, you eject it first so that it can come back into a normal uh, yeah, normal mode of operation. That's very important to do. Now, once you've transferred your update file onto your Kindle, then it's, again, fairly simple. You simply tap on the menu, you go to settings, you go to device options, advanced options, and this grayed out option here will no longer be grayed out. Once you have a firmware in the root, if the Kindle recognizes it, it will enable this option and then you will be able to just simply tap update your Kindle and the update procedure will go as normally. All right, so there hasn't been too many dramatic things, at least on paper. It looks like there's not too many dramatic things uh, that have been added to Kindle. So let's go through the mundane ones uh, first, as they've actually also listed them. They've saved the best for last. So the first one is, yeah, talk about mundane. In your library, the collections that you make, you can now watch them in list mode. Definitely useful, but holy moly, talk about a low bar for calling something a feature. Like, wow, okay, but all right, that's new. You can now view your collections as lists. Definitely useful. 
Uh, the next thing is everything is regarding notebooks the next three things the first one is that now when you go to the page or notebook overview which is this icon here and you have the pages now if you long press uh, and hold you will enter the multi select option where we can finally make a multi selection of pages that we want um, to make it all work. Uh, this works almost great, except that it lacks one obvious thing. Uh, anyone cares to take a guess? What? Select all. We don't have an option to select all. If you're implementing something, completeness is the name of, of the game. And yeah, there's definitely no reason why you wouldn't have select all option in a multi-select feature and functionality. From the multi-select option, you can actually delete the selection, you can move the selected pages, and you can share the selected pages. What you can also do is you can add an in, uh, 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 insert an empty page, and the way that it actually works is it inserts it after the selected pages, right? So it's gonna look at the last one. Oh no, that's, what? That was very strange. So this is, this is supposed to work if I add a page. Yes, it adds after the selection. But if you have multiple pages selected, it should add on next to this one. No, I don't want to delete. I want to add. But it's going to, <laughs> it's going to do the same procedure for every selection. It just has a for loop. So basically for each item that's selected, add a blank page after it. Okay, well that's unusual functionality. It's weird, but that's how it works. And um, yeah, you can move to, can you move to a different, uh, to a different notebook? Move, tap a vertical line to move page to that position. Ah, okay. Wow, that's counterintuitive. And where's my undo? I don't wanna... Hmm. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> that really, really sucks. Holy moly. Yeah, okay. That's how you move the page. So multi-select mode is there in notebooks. The implementation of it is bizarre and incomplete, but it is some things there at least. Another new thing that we have is when we go to share, we have the option of sharing a single page. So you can share the current page and you can of course share the entire notebook. And here we come to the most important feature of the new uh, update. And that is this option here. So in these options, you have quick send to your last used email or my email address in this case, I guess. Then you have share via email and then you can specify to which email you want to share. But then we have convert to text and quick send and convert to text and email. But the new thing comes in the form of sending as a searchable PDF. And that's something that's new. So if I go to convert text and email, that's the conver conversion. The conversion is done fairly, fairly well. Not really, not excellent. It didn't understand the note air 3C. It couldn't understand the three number. So it was just going like, is it an S? Is it a B? No, it's a three. And it didn't get the parentheses here. So everything else, it was actually able to do it quite well. So what is the new thing? Well, now when you go to share, of course you can send to blah, blah. Uh, but you also have the option to attach notebook as a searchable PDF, and then you can send. And that is actually pretty cool. For that, we need to get over to the computers for you to actually see it. All right, so let's start with checking out how the regular notebook is normally uh, exported. And this is the regular notebook. And wherever I click on it, even if I click on text, it will simply select this whole thing as 
an image and basically the text is not selectable if we go control f and let's say i search for a uh, word while it has no matches and that's that so that's the normal type of behavior now let's see this is uh let's check out the page if it is ex uh, so this is a single page exported as a text and this is the text conversion that has been exported as a text file now here is the same page the the text page the single page that has been exported but this time as a searchable pdf you'll notice that it looks exactly the same as the regular one right and if i click on an empty patch it will behave the same however the cursor changes as soon as i hit the letters and you can see that we can actually select words here furthermore if I go control F and I search for while and press enter, it is actually searchable, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, when I look at the whole notebook, this is how a whole notebook looks like in a text format when you export it. And this is how it looks like in the searchable PDF, right? So everything as you would uh, expect it right so that kind of makes sense but when we do uh, two things first of all if I do search um, I don't know let's uh, let's search for uh, don't right and then it automatically goes exactly to the word where I want it to um, or maybe let's see what do we have in here um, yeah let, let's and that also works. And let's go back to the uh, Note Air 3C and it finds the whole thing connected as well, right? So maybe you can just say like test notebook, it just works, right? So as long as the conversion is something because this is the text that it's looking for. So this is the text that it sees underneath all of this. And the more important and more interesting thing that they're not actually talking about is, and I kind of noticed that when I started going around, if you can see how the cursor is moving around, I'm just moving it via the keyboard. And now when I press shift and I start doing this, I can select my handwritten text in the PDF. And if I just drag and make this selection and I just do control copy, and I go here to an empty um, uh, document and I go control V, I have pasted the text that I've selected from my searchable handwritten PDF file. And that is pretty freaking cool because I can just go like this, copy, go into wherever, Word document or something like that. You paste the text uh, or email or whatever you want and that just works. This is really, really real world usable type of functionality that I'm very, very happy to see somebody that has actually implemented it. And to be honest, nobody has that. Supernote doesn't have that. Remarkable doesn't have that. Books doesn't have that. And here is one very, very important real world thing that uh, yeah, Kindle Scribe is currently excelling at. Well, all right, on paper, um, the update seems like a very small kind of update and they do start with like really tiny, tiny little things. But amongst those tiny little things, there is one feature that has been implemented on this, which is extremely useful and extremely, extremely good. Now, this is exactly the point that I'm trying to make when I'm saying that Remarkable has lost its direction and has lost track of the big picture. Um, granted, I think that Kindle and Remarkable are, you know, they can compete who is uh, gonna count smaller things as updates, like woohoo, you have an option of viewing your collections as lists as a feature, like wow. That is definitely remarkable level of things. However, since Remarkable released the folio, I 
propose to you that they have lost the direction that their developers have been distracted or they have been as a development team have been distracted with the folio and the texting um, because they are not really focusing on things that matter and what it primarily is and that is a digital paper replacement tablet kind of a thing and I'm sorry but right now this thing that Kindle has with the ability to export as your handwritten PDF, but you can also like uh, select, you can search the words and you can just select and copy paste that into a document. That is absolutely freaking awesome. Now, the thing that's really not awesome with Kindle still is that the only way to actually share this awesomeness is via email. That is absolutely mind blowing to me that they're still completely locked into that whole thing and that you have the limitations of, yeah, well, the email limitations that you may have. So that's something that you definitely have to kind of keep in mind. But for regular type of use, I think that you won't have a problem with that. But, you know, with bigger stuff, definitely you will run into that limitation. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. However, this November 2023 update for the Kindle Scribe brings really, really relevant stuff and powerful stuff to the platform. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of it and what do you think of this whole functionality and should maybe Remarkable have been the first to actually have done this? I mean, they've been longer in the game. They've been more focused on the whole digital paper tablet thing, yet whoop, here comes you know, Kindle, not even a full year in the game, and they've already figured stuff out that, uh, yeah, Remarkable hasn't figured out in six years. And that's, that's something to think about, at least for me. What do you guys think? Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description down below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.